Yo, DFE, stick it, remote teaching, remote teaching, all right, stop, home educate and listen, Mr. P's back on a virtual mission, anxiety grabs a hold of me tightly, writing lesson plans both daily and nightly, will it ever end, Joe, I hope so, turn on the Wi-Fi and let's go, to the extreme, my workload is a shambles, trying to get the camera to find the right angle, teaching, via Skype, Teams and Zoom, dividing fractions from my kid's bedroom, Dudley, turn your mic off like Melody, concentrate, because here comes my dope plenary, record it or stream it, what's the best way, home learning benefit, no wet play, laptop's broken, yo, I'll sort it, Gavlar's a fool, don't Ofsted report it, remote teaching, it's a nightmare, remote teaching, when's it over, remote teaching, please make it stop, remote teaching, over many hurdles we're jumping With the key worker kids in the parents are buzzing Quick powerpoint on human mating PDF corrupted and my PC's updated Teaching them yo On my school iPad Three kids downstairs all yelling dad Swearing on cam that's an absolute no no I need a Red Bull and a shot of JMOs Worrying my to-do list ain't done How can I teach and homeschool my son Where is the charger? Nearly lost the Wi-Fi. A day doesn't pass where I don't have a little cry Keep on teaching my class of children Some at home but most in my lesson My laptop's dead yo So I continue to zoom the kids on my iPhone Government out of touch meanies, Boris, Gavlar, bunch of bloody weenies, clueless, send kids back for a day, mix with the mates and then take the school away, numpties, really went and dropped the ball, closing schools at 8pm the night before, teachers have to answer the call, replan the terms work in no time at all, learning virtually really fast, logged on again, my laptop's just crashed, classroom to classroom, the school is still packed, this can't be a lockdown, that's totally whack, guidance is woeful, you know what I mean, about as useful as Microsoft Teams, if there's a problem, I'll troubleshoot it. Just read your book and I'll turn it off and restart it Remote teaching It's a nightmare Remote teaching When's it over? Remote teaching Please make it stop Remote teaching Yo, I'm out of here Good luck to your mother Peace Chatting to a bit of a teacher legend I never thought I'd say that in my whole broadcasting career um, Mr. P, how are you, sir? You're right. I am not too bad. How are you? Yeah, not bad at all. Now, when I now the the listeners to my radio show and my podcasts uh, will know that you are um, a bit of a legend. I've spoken about you a number of times. You are really clever, funny, creative, all on TikTok. Not bad for a teacher. <laughs> well, I'm trying my best. Yeah, stay stay down with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, what, thank I- you. I added a lot better at school if you were my teacher, by the way, because uh, you just make it look so fun and you make it look so easy as well. But um, let's get on to First of all, let's just clarify. You are an actual proper full on teacher as well, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm uh, so I'm a primary school teacher. I've been a primary school teacher for the past 13 years. Uh, for the past few years, I've been working at my school part time and then I've been running a sort of training uh, teacher CPD business the other part of the week. So sort of before the pandemic, my job would be sort of first part of the week, traveling here, there and everywhere around the UK, running training sessions, courses, conferences for teachers. Uh, Funnily enough, focusing on uh, utilizing technology more effectively to enhance the curriculum. Um, And then I'd spend uh, a few days in my school for the rest of the week as well. So uh, I feel like I've got the best of both worlds, really. I'm still able to be in the classroom with the children, but also then being able to reach out and support as many teachers as I, as I can do. Um, we'll get on to the whole homeschooling thing and technology and all that kind of stuff in, in a few moments' time. Um, but when when did you decide to get really creative with all of it? Because your videos are hilarious. Uh, namely, oh, obviously, you. Ice Ice Baby. That is just off the scale, yeah. mate, that is. Yeah, uh, well, I've been doing it for a fair few years, to be fair. I mean, probably I'd say about six. I've, I've started the social media thing probably about six, seven years ago. And then maybe five years ago, decided to put myself on the camera and doing different sort of videos, just trying to spread a bit of positivity around our profession, really, because usually it's all sort of doom and gloom. And, uh, you know, it's not very uh, positive. 
And I just wanted to, you know, just share the universal life of, of a teacher and, and how amazing it can be. Don't get me wrong, it's incredibly difficult and very challenging, but at the same time, it can be incredibly rewarding, very fulfilling. Um, and I, through my social media, just want to try and highlight that. So teachers who might be having a bit of a tough day, school staff who are feeling a bit of, a bit feeling quite fed up can just spend a couple of minutes just laughing, joking, realizing that it's not just them. We all go through the same sort of struggles, frustrations. And uh, yeah, it just seems to really resonate and help a lot of school staff. Um, the video is a little bit jumpy, by the way. So you, you're kind of like doing a robotic kind of, you know, you'll do a bit and then you'll freeze a little bit. But the audio is absolutely fine. But we'll stay with it anyway. We'll see. How right, we'll okay. get with it. Um, so let's talk about homeschooling then. Anyway, first of all, um, what am I calling you, Mr. P? Or what's, what's your actual name? Can I ask? Well, whatever's, yeah, Mr. P, Lee, whatever's right. easiest for yourself, I don't mind. I'll call you Mr. P, because that, that's your brand anyway. Yeah. Mr. P. Uh, <laughs> right, so this um, uh, homeschooling thing, there'll be a lot of uh, parents at home, me included, even though my wife is a primary school teacher, she struggles because she's got that yeah. much home learning to do for her own class that we've still got yeah. to do it for our three-year-old as well. And we're getting these pings on our app, on the app, on the phone, going, right, now it's time to do this, now it's time to do that. Have you got to do all of this stuff that you've been sent or where do people go with this? Well, every school is different, aren't they? So uh, I can't speak on behalf of every school. I know what our school are doing. I think it's tough. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I'm struggling with it and I'm a teacher as well. Give me a class of 35 kids in a classroom over homeschooling my three any day of the week. And it is incredibly tough. And I think... You know, as far as teachers are concerned, I think we've got to be really realistic in our expectations. I know the, the DfE, the guidance that's come from the DfE have stated that we need to be providing, I think it's like four or five hours of learning a day, um, which speaking as a parent, they're having a laugh <laughs> if you could, uh, you know, see how much my kids get done. But, um, you know, that's fine. I think schools can be providing that amount, but I think we've then got to be realistic in our expectations of certain children, certain families, certain circumstances. And I think, you know, we, we've got to make sure that as, as schools, we shouldn't be a reason to be putting any more pressure onto families when we're going through so much. You know, families are really struggling with so many other aspects. Um, and as far as parents are concerned, you know, I'm sure your best is good enough. It's just trying to engage the children as much as possible, make sure they're giving everything a real good go to the best of their ability. Um, but then, you know, <laughs> it's like what I always say, as a teacher, there is the the odd lesson no matter how much you plan for it no matter how much you have prepared it just falls flat it doesn't quite hit and that means you know a, a bad lesson doesn't make a bad teacher uh and if you do have the odd day where you are it is frustrating for the children they're not engaging with it you're pulling your hair out you know if all else fails my goal from all is just get a book and read a book for half an hour you know because that can have such a huge impact and if we can come out at the other end of this and your child can have a thirst for reading, a love for reading for pleasure, they won't go far wrong. You know, research has shown that the biggest indicator of how successful children will be later on in life is whether they read for pleasure. And if you speak to any primary school teacher, that is what we're always trying to do as a school is promote reading for pleasure. Uh, and so if we can model that as parents and show a real interest and just, you know, spend half an hour before bed sharing a story, doing the voices to make them laugh, just get them lost. Just, you know, we talk a lot of the time of the gift of reading children. This is a gift of reading. I don't think it's a gift. I think it's a right. I think children have the right to be uh, read incredible stories, amazing adventures that will, you know, stick with them for the rest of their lives. So if I can give parents one tip, it's, you know, try. obviously you're trying your best. You do. And I think there's that pressure because, and I think there's pressure on teachers as well, because ultimately we know that the best place for the children is in the classroom. And because that can't happen due to everything going on, the safety element of it, you know, we are putting ourselves under so much pressure because we want to be doing our best for the children. I'm sure it's the same for parents, but we know we can't quite replicate the experience children will get if they were in class each and every day, but we're trying our best. It's a means to an end. As long as, um, you know, this situation means that a staff member a family member of our school community doesn't become another victim to the to the virus it's 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 got to be done you know so i think just just be trying your best and like i say if all else fails just read a book uh have fun with that and you know 
uh, keep doing the amazing job that you're doing. Before we get on to the content bit about this uh, chit chat that we're going to be having today, um, me and my wife have been talking a lot about, um, get me wrong, Gavin Williamson and the government have not officially said that they're not going to be getting back into the classroom until about Easter or May or something like that. Yeah, That's not officially been said. But isn't there like, if they write the year off, right? If they write the year off and you're not going back till June, July, and then you're on your big summer holidays, what about those people, those students that are meant to go up another year? Have they got to sit back? Because there's, there's a chain of years going up, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, my children are in year five. So, if we don't get back till whenever, June, July, then they'll be expected to start year six in September, as far as I'm aware. So, how, how is that all that going to play out then? Or, or you just don't know, do you? <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd love to know. And, and this is the thing with, with the whole remote learning uh, situation we find ourselves in. Ultimately, no one really does know because this is completely new. We've never been in this situation before. So, you know, I think uh, we've just got to try our absolute best. And whenever it might be that we're in the classroom full time with our children, you know, whether it's Easter or hopefully not, but even if it is later, I have no doubt that teachers will continue to work the backsides off to get children where they need to be because, you know, teachers are miracle workers in so many ways, you know, that to see the progress children make and the impact teachers can have is just unbelievable. So um, it's going to be tough. There'll be a lot of adjustments as far as maybe prioritizing certain parts of the curriculum to get that catch up in place but like i say i have no doubt that teachers will step up once again and and do what they're amazing at doing which is uh, helping the children so let's get on to the content on your social media posts and stuff it like i said to you before at the start of this it, it's absolutely hilarious it's really creative um oh, things you. like the ice ice baby uh, video that you did not long ago um you've been on telly about that haven't you as well haven't you been on this morning is it was that about that video yeah it was yeah so that um i think i don't was it two weeks ago now that we posted that? And then over the weekend, it got sort of half a million followers, uh, sorry, half a million views. And then, um, yeah, got got a phone call off a producer this morning saying, would I be willing to come on and have a chat about it? Which was, was amazing. And it was just lovely to have an opportunity to go on to national TV and just reflect what it's actually like and what's actually going on in a lot of schools. Because if you ask any teacher at the minute, what is the most frustrating phrase that you can say to a teacher because usually it's the the whole you get 13 weeks off a year but yeah. you know if teachers are <laughs> I was talking, my wife you know, a bit of a, saying that <laughs> yeah it, and it's like this thing that you can't you, teachers can't say how tough their job is because it's like yeah but you get 13 weeks off and teachers don't mind the actual teaching it's all of everything else it's the workload outside the classroom that we have an issue with and um and yeah so if you the, the worst thing at the minute is when anyone says schools are closed and it's like schools aren't closed. You know, schools have been open right the way through for vulnerable key worker children. And with the latest update with the guidance uh, in January, the, the sort of key worker status is so open to interpretation. You've got some schools who are, at, you know, three quarters capacity. So it feels like they're not even uh, re- close to being closed let, let alone then having to provide all this online learning as well so yeah this morning that interview was great because i was able if i didn't say that on national tv if i didn't tv if i didn't actually say schools aren't closed i don't think i'd uh, live with myself and it, it was just amazing to uh, to receive so many messages off the back of it from school staff and teachers who are working themselves so hard and just doing as absolutely everything and it is really really tough and i think it they just really appreciated having someone just sort of speak on behalf of the pre- profession in a in a more positive way uh, some of your lyrics and some of your raps and your rhymes and your stories and your, and your tiktok video is it tiktok videos you do as well is it i think it is isn't it uh yeah i dabble with a bit of, you know i was i was very sort of anti tiktok for a while <laughs> uh, i just couldn't get my head around it and i actually i made a video on my facebook page about how frustrating it is having to teach children who just can't, you know, they just seem to have a condition where every so often they'll throw a new dance move while you're speaking <laughs> yes. to them or walking down the corridor. And then obviously when lockdown happened, um, I found it was a quite, it was quite a fun way to engage with my daughter who obviously wanted to do a few of the dances, but you know, she's a little bit younger. So I wanted to make sure I was keeping an eye on everything there. So we did it through my page and then, 
yeah, it's that sort of uh, yeah been quite fun to explore, and you can be quite creative on TikTok. To be fair, um, it's definitely not appropriate for primary school children. I'll say that, but <laughs> you can have a you can have quite a bit yeah. of fun on there as a as a as a grown up. And um, yeah, but I mean, mainly it's sort of Facebook, Instagram uh, is where I sort of post a lot of the content, and um, yeah, it just seems to go down really well with a lot of teachers and school staff. How long does it take you to get the lyrics and get the idea together, or do you just go with it and just go right record see what comes out yeah well when it comes to the weekends at the minute because we're on lockdown there's not much else you can do you can only go on so many walks a day around your block can't you so yeah. um <laughs> yeah it, it sort of takes me mind off everything else and um you know i'll try and get the kids involved as well so we made a couple over last weekend one where my daughter sang we we remade uh, we rewrote you know dilemma by nelly and kelly yeah. and it was all about <laughs> Basically, my daughter telling me how bad I am as a teacher at home, um, which, uh, again, went down really well. And so it's just a, it's, it's more of a hobby, that side of things for me. And um, it gives me a little bit of a welcome distraction. And it just motivates me knowing that putting it out there uh, just really seems to help a lot of other teachers and school staff who in this situation where, you know, they might be living on their own and not being able to socialize with family and friends at the weekend the way schools are set up with the bubbles, which ah, I wish we would have come up with a better name instead of yeah. bubbles. You know, we could have made that so much better. You know, something like kingdoms, call them kingdoms. So rather than a bubble bursting, you know, someone tests positive, it could be, you know, a kingdom's fallen. That sounded so much more epic, you know, but never mind. It's bubbles anyway. But you're not interacting with your staff and you're not having the usual, you know, natter over a cup of tea or sitting in the staff room, putting the worlds to rights. And I think, that's something a lot of school staff have taken for granted because you need that distraction for even if it's just five minutes during a school day so that you're having that adult to adult conversation. And so I think through my social media, through the podcast that I do with my brother, um, it seems to uh, has become a bit of a substitute for that staff room banter for a lot of, for a lot of school staff. Got two more questions for you, Mr. P. First one is if uh, a TV pro production company, came to you and said, Mr. P, we want to put you on the telly because you're dead funny, you're really creative, and this is going to work. And even non-parents and even non-teachers, and I'm a non-teacher, we just think it's all fantastic. Would you go for it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. The, th the thing, thing is, I used to be, like, when I was younger, I was really into acting. Like, acting was what I wanted to do. Um, and... Funnily enough, when I was about 15, 16, I got a call back to be in Hollyoaks. So I went for an initial audition and I uh, got a call back, but it clashed with this rugby tournament with school. And so I had to decide whether I was going to... I went for the audition, didn't get it. And all my rugby mates at the time just ripped me to shreds because I missed the tournament. And I sort of gave into that peer pressure and sort of knocked it on. It said the old acting thing. Um, and I think that that sort of background when I was younger has certainly helped me with everything else that I'll, I'll do. But I did say, you know, if all else fails and I'd, I'd love to give acting another crack. So, uh, yeah, if that was to happen, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah, I think, why not? You only think, live once. But... I, think, I think the fact that you look a bit too much like Robbie Williams might have an issue there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie yeah, Williams, I, did, I get that. Yeah, I get that quite a lot. I mean, I've, I've had that comparison and then one once I was in a school and I'd done a training session with a staff uh, with the staff and one of the TAs came up to me and went, do you know who you really remind me of? I was like, all right, Robbie Williams. No, no, no. Steve MacDonald. What? I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <Cheers>. <laughs> what do you do with that one? So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right. So what's next for Mr. P anyway? Um, you know, where can people find you um, and and where do you think this whole situation is going to go next? Um, oof, how long's a piece of string? I don't know. I, I, you know, you ask any teacher, they would love to be back in the classroom full time with the with the kids, having all the children back in. You know, through this whole situation, it's not been something we've wanted teachers haven't you know we don't we'd never choose to do this remote teaching because we know how tough it is for everyone involved how tough it is for staff how tough it is for the children how tough it is for parents you know but ultimately it's always just come down to safety safety of the children staff and and our school community our family so you know as soon as we know it's safe enough to be back you know you, teachers can't wait I, I can tell you that speaking as a teacher we can't wait to be back so hopefully that's going to be sooner rather than later um 
But for me personally, uh, I've got a couple of exciting prospects in the pipeline. Um, and, you know, I'll continue to just try and bring a bit of light relief in the situation we find ourselves in. So you can find me on Facebook, uh, IC2 Mr. P on Facebook. Instagram, it's ICT underscore Mr. P. Same on Twitter and same on TikTok. If you're interested, I do a podcast with my brother who is a HLTA in a school, so higher level teaching assistant. And we do a podcast called Two Mr. P's in a Podcast. Um, and we just share funny stories from the classroom. Uh, so it's sort of an educational podcast where you don't really learn anything. You can just come and just laugh at some of the hilarious. I mean, we get sent some absolutely brilliant stories. It's all anonymous. So teachers really do <laughs> divulge, just share everything and we can just have a good giggle about it. So, um, yeah, we had a we had a sort of live tour uh, scheduled for 2020, which has now been rearranged. Well, it was supposed to be sort of now, but it's been knocked back towards the end of the year. So all the details for that. Um, will be on the website to mrpspodcast.com where of course you can share your stories as well um, and yeah we just keep trucking on keep keep doing what we're doing um, and I like, love to use this opportunity to just tell every teacher every parent out there how proud how uh, amazing you're doing and uh, yeah just keep going Fantastic. Uh, one last thing before you go you say your brother is a higher level teaching, t- teaching assistant is that right? Yeah yeah uh, yeah. So do you give him a bit of ribbing, like, because you're like the proper fully quiet teacher and he, that he's not? <laughs> no, no. I mean, we do have some, we do. It's funny because it is like, we've always took the mick out of each other and we do have a good giggle between ourselves. But no, I mean, it, the, the backbone of every successful school is uh, the support staff. So I just know how valuable having a really effective TA not that I think he's necessarily an effective TA, but I'm just speaking in general. You 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 can ask any teacher what's the best resource, you know, what's the best thing you can have in a classroom. And it's just having, you know, a decent TA. And again, they don't get anywhere near the, the recognition that they deserve. So, um, yeah, we, I'm always trying to big up support staff and just everyone. I think within education, it's not just teachers, it's support staff, it's admin staff, it's, you know, lunchtime supervisors, cooks, caretakers, site managers, um you know they've all been they've all been amazing in this whole situation and I'm, i've never been more proud to call myself a teacher and part of uh, our, our profession of education so yeah no he's uh he's he, he's hilarious he's one of the funniest people i know my brother adam he brings a whole different dynamic to the podcast to what i share on my socials so oh, then. thank you very much for that mr p um and keep up the good no work and, and uh yeah like you say bring us some light relief Station, 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 station